Uh, this video is problem number, probability problem number nine from Digital University. In this video, we want to demonstrate the use of Bayes' theorem um, in conditional probability type problems. And here's the problem we want to consider. Um, in a community, there's a political party. We'll just call it Party P. And it's supported by 10% of the population. And for the members of Party P, 75% of these members support a local uh, bond referendum. Now, the opposition party, which we can designate as the complement to Party P, that's supported by 90% of the population. And 25% of the members of the opposition party support the bond referendum. And there's two questions that we want to answer. First question, if you randomly select a voter on the street, what is the probability that that voter uh, does indeed support the bond referendum? And then the second question is, if you have a randomly selected voter that does support the referendum, what is the probability that that supporter belongs not to the opposition party, but belongs to party P. So we have it designated like this. The voters of party P are represented with P, and the complementary event would be the voters of the opposition party. S is for the voters who support the bond referendum. The complementary event, SC, would be voters who oppose the uh, bond referendum. And the easiest way to demonstrate the situation is with a probability tree like this, if we can get it into focus. Well, let's just consider the top part. Here, then, from the general population, if you randomly select a voter, you have a one-tenth probability that that voter belongs to Party P. For Party P, that's supported by 10% of the population. The opposition party, the complementary event, that's supported by 90% of the population. So if you randomly select a voter, you have a one-tenth probability that that voter belongs to Party P. Now, remember, 75% of the members of Party P support the bond referendum. So the conditional event here that you have a member of Party P that supports the bond referendum, that has a probability of 0.75. Now the joint probability of selecting a voter at random that belongs to Party P and supports the bond referendum, that would be equal to this probability times this probability, or we have that shown up here. Here's the joint probability of someone belonging to Party P, and they support the bond referendum. And that's equal to the probability that they belong to Party P times the probability of this conditional event which is 0.1 times 0.75. Okay, now, if you randomly select a voter on the street, there's a 90% chance, or a 0.9 probability, that they belong to the opposition party. And in the opposition party, 25% of its members support the bond referendum. So, the joint or the uh, conditional event here that you're in the opposition party and you support the bond referendum, that's a probability of 0.25. So the joint probability now of selecting someone who's in the opposition party and they support the referendum, that is equal to the probability that they belong to the opposition party times the probability that they're in the opposition party and support the bond referendum, that's 0 0.9 
times 0.25. So here are two different ways then of encountering a voter that supports the bond referendum. They might be from the opposition party, in which case that would be 0.29 times 0.25, or they might be in the minority party, and the probability of that occurring is 0.1 times 0.75. So the total chance of encountering a supporter of the referendum would be 0.1 or 0.75 times 0.1 that's from this plus 0.9 times 0.25 25, that's from this, this times this, multiply these together and add them up, and it comes out to be 3 tenths. So if you randomly select a voter on the street, you have a 30% chance that that person supports the bond referendum. And again, that's coming from either someone who happened to be in the opposition party that supports the referendum or someone who is in the minority party, P, that supports the referendum. So that takes care of part one. So we go back to here. The probability of S is three-tenths. Voters who support the bond resolution, the probability of that occurring, if you just meet someone at random, would be three-tenths. Okay, now we want to consider the second part of the problem, and that is remember for the minority party P, 75% of its members support the referendum, and the opposition party, 25% do. Now, if you randomly encounter a voter that supports the referendum, they might be from the opposition party or from this party. So if you randomly encounter a voter that supports the bond referendum, what is the probability that they're from this party, not from this one? And that's what we want to consider now for the second part of the problem. Well, here, let's first of all go back to this. Here we said that the probability of belonging to party P and supporting the referendum was this expression here, which hopefully you're familiar with from watching our previous videos dealing with conditional probability. So, this is equal to and again, all this is saying is that the joint probability of belonging to party P and supporting the bond referendum is equal to the probability that you belong to party P and that if you're a member of party P you also support the referendum that joint event is this times this as we have shown right there okay now what about this expression the joint probability of a supporter and belonging to party P. This is equal to this expression. This is the probability of supporting the bond referendum times the probability that you support the bond referendum and you also belong to party P. 
Let's make certain we carefully understand these two now. This expression is the joint probability that you belong to party P and you support the bond referendum. And that's equal to the probability of belonging to party P times the probability of this um, conditional event that you're a member of party P and you support the bond referendum. And remember, this was point one, and this was point seven five. Now here, this is the joint probability for being a supporter of the referendum and belonging to party P. This expression is equal to, here then, this is the probability that you are a supporter times the probability that you are a supporter and you belong to party P. So these are two different expressions with two different quantities. But if we think about it further, clearly this and this have to be the same number. Here we're talking about you belong to party P and you support the referendum. You support the referendum and you belong to party P. Numerically, those two have got to be the same number. So that means that even though this involves the multiplication of different variables compared to this, they have to be equal to one another. Now we determined what this was in the earlier part of the video. That's three tenths. The probability that you are a randomly selected voter that supports the referendum and you also belong to party P, we don't know what that is. That's what we're trying to figure out. That was the second question that was asked. The second question asked was, if you happen to randomly select a voter that supports the referendum, what's the probability that they belong to party P? That's what this expression is right here. But you can see we can figure this out. In the first part of the problem, we determined what this was. This was given to us, and this was given to us. Well, this times this is this, but these two have to be numerically equal to each other. So this is just point zero seven five. So we have point zero seven five equals three tenths times the probability that someone who supports the referendum also belongs to party P. So this is equal to point zero seven five divided by three tenths or that would be equal to point zero seven five times ten over three, and this comes out to be equal to point two five. So the probability that someone who supports the bond referendum and is also a member of party P is point two five. So notice now that 10 only 10% of the party belong to party P, but 25% of the supporters of the bond referendum belong to party P. So this is a way that sometimes people manipulate numbers to make it look like a particular party has more influence or has more membership population than what it really has. What we want to demonstrate here is that because of this relationship where these two have different expressions, this and this, 
but the fact that they have to be numerically equal to one another, that means that quite often in one part of a problem, you're able to figure out a certain variable, like in this problem, we figured out this one. Then once you do that, you can also figure out another unknown variable. So in fact, this is part one of the problem, and this turned out to be part two of the problem. Here we could figure this one out from the numbers that were given to us initially. Then once we did that, knowing that these two are equal to each other, we could also figure out that part of the problem. And this is Bayes' theorem right here then. And hopefully this was a demonstration of Bayes' theorem. Um, it helps clarify it for you. And again, it's a, it's a very useful technique. And again, it's, it's a way that's, that sometimes the technique is used to massage and manipulate numbers. Uh, again, sometimes done with uh, political parties, where it looks like one party has more influence than what it really has. OK, anyway, that's the end of this video. Hope it was worthwhile. Um, we referred to other videos that we made regarding conditional probability, and I think those were videos 8 and 9, or 7 and 8, and you can find them at the website digital-university.org and clicking on the combinatorics and probability section. Okay, come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll see if we can solve some more problems.